Hello everyone and welcome back to Legacy of Cain Blood Omen 2. This is episode 9. Last time we went through the Eternal Prison, which was a pretty incredible segment actually. I had a great time going through there. And we've returned uh, to have a chat with the Beast who's uh, told us more about the Mass, which is uh, the creature that we have to slay to prevent the Saraphan Lord, aka one of the Hilden, from achieving their goals. The greenhouse gases power of the glyphs uh, is connecting everything together so that human and vampire alike will be defeated. Now, uh, he opened up a little door for us here, so we're going down this way. And uh, there's multiple doors in this place as well, so I don't know if we'll end up going somewhere else. Probably, who knows? But uh, let's venture forth into this unassuming corridor. Hold dark gift menu and select Immolate. Oh yes, this was the new gift that we got, so it's called Immolate. Strike when the rage bar is active, so it's another new rage meter. So we've got three purples, three reds, and that's all our powers for the game. Alright, I guess we'll find out what happens when we Immolate we haven't seen one of these guys in a while. That's the race of the Builder. Interesting, indeed. Okay. Uh, I've just realized that my volume control is lowered on Blood Omen. Give me a second. Let me just fix that right up. There we go. Alright. This is one of them fuckers. Okay. That's interesting. I kind of had this impression that he was like the last one. out there in disguise or something. And they got the greenhouse gases coming out of them like the Seraphan Lord does. Oh, okay, okay, so I wonder if this is... Hmm. So is the Builder and these creatures... Are these the Hilden? I think it was ever mentioned who, what species or race or anything that the Builder belonged to. But if they've got the same glow and green eyes as the uh, Saraphan Lord, it could be so. Especially as uh, they're referring to Hild and stuff, and he's one of the people who built it. But maybe I'm, maybe I'm being confused. Who knows? We will find out. I'm. Curious to see how this immolate power is gonna look when we unleash it. That metal grinding noise could probably—I could probably go without that. That would be awesome. It's got this grating, irritating metal scraping sound, and I can't turn down my sound effects because voice volume is also tied to it as well. Ah, oh, yep, sure. Um, is there a specific trigger for that? Because, because that's the only one to do it. You're gonna have almost... My weapon is almost already broken. Okay. Damn. Okay. Uh, there you go. That's a good, that's a good, uh, fury attack right there. A lot of blood, too. Very nice. Uh, okay. That's what we want to use going forward. That is, a, like, a one-hit kill right there. Oh, God. Look at this place. We're in hell. Okay, so the power... We need to send power to this door. Jump over here. 
bien. What is the purpose of these devices? Need a new weapon. I was drinking my tea. I did not have time to. But my bars have increased in sh in size. All right, there, there, there we go. You got what you wanted. You've broken my weapon, you bastard. Prepare to get uh, immolated. However. Oh. Oh, I wasn't blocking. Okay, that's that's very fun. That's just that just changes the game now. All I can do is I just sit there and block, build up the meter and go, "Okay, now you're dead." <laughs> that changes things dramatically. I don't need to attack my enemies with a weapon anymore. That's child's play. For babies, you say. I can now quite literally burn them alive. Alright, I see. That's how we get back there. Can we... Oh, I see. So we've got to go, we go through here, and then... Oh yes, ah, I see, and then we telekinesis the, the elevator. To the power of telekinesis, I do this. Will it automatically... Yes. Yes, indeed. Prisoner down there. I suppose we'll just leave them be. They're not hurting anyone. Oh, what the hell? Look at that! Who just appeared at the window? Look at this! Oh my god, it's one of those! Where'd you come from? Oh! Spooky! Where the hell has it gone? Oh my god, there it is! Oh! Quick! Run away! Haha, <laughs> loser. I don't need to fight you. Alright, let's open this door. Oh, they got they got men in cages. Help me, you kind sir. Pardon me, governor. Oh, yep, they literally just sound like that, too. Ooh. All right. You guys just happy to be here, are you? Don't you wish to be free? You... What are they... What are they doing? They're transferring your life essence into another... Pod. Oh god, I'm gonna get attacked by these things, but I don't know how they choose to attack you. Oh, they, there you go. They just... Oh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> they just do. Okay. Uh, can I do that from through glass? Can I, can I interact with this through glass? Yes, I can. I have opened that. Do I know why I have opened that? No, I do not. That is the fun and joy of it. Right. Let me stop doing that, because that's like, that's three now. That's, that's hilarious. Okay, can they see me through the mist? Good. 
because I'd be pissed off if they could. Alright, you turn around. I'll get you. I haven't seen mist in so long. It's been an eternity. Ah, hang on a minute. I see. Oh, I freed someone and then I can charm them. Ah, shit. Hang on, I'm supposed to be, um... I'm supposed... Ugh! I think if I jump through, they can't hit me. Just jump through. I'm supposed to be in here and I'm supposed to charm the guy. Gotcha. And then he does the, the gas. Hello. I'm that guy. Don't mind me, sir. I'm just going to... Turn on that one. Yes. Indeed, you're checking the, uh, the gas tank over there. Oh, I keep forgetting every time I walk out of the room and then I get jump scared. Every time it's like my brain, my mind gets wiped. Can't get me from jumping, you bastards. Ooh, magic. So I guess that's why they wear that disguise when they're in the city, because they look like normal humans, but then, like, um... They go in here, and then they're like, Hell yeah, I'm actually an evil, kooky monster! And that's sort of how they work, I guess. You're defeated. Okay. They can only hold the barriers up while they're standing in front of it, or something. a beautiful piano theme playing in the background here. It's quite nice. Um, okay. What are these? Boxes of, um... What is that? Boxes of blood and guts you got in there? You stored away? Oh... Bladed sword. How do you, uh, because you can like move it? How do you, how do you pick up and drag boxes again? It's been, it's been so long since I've had to do it that I've. So I was like, can I just drag that? I don't think so. Just wondering if there's anything to do. Again, anytime I wonder if there's anything to do, the game says, ha ha ha, you idiot. The game is simple. Do not complicate it with your petty puzzles. Hello? Are you fighting now? Okay. We are now fighting. Face me if you dare. Oh yeah, I forgot that you do that. Every time I try and attack, I'm like, I should just... I just wait. No more attacking. Just blocking and then flame. Hello, sir. I believe I am looking to charm you, I think. One second. Coming. Oh no. Right, you've got that move. 
that's right. Oh, that's right. Okay. Is that all you've got now? Come on. There we go. Come on. Do the other stuff. There we go. I wonder if that's a single target or whether that can affect anyone in my vicinity, because that would be awesome. Only one way to find out. Yes, that is the case. It did look like his lever didn't have power. That's good, because I will give it power. That's why I looked around first. I think if Blood Omen 2 really like condensed down the first three to four chapters into something else and like was able to hurry it along, uh, it would have been a lot easier to get into, I think. It's, it's, it's quite off-putting at the beginning of the game, uh, at, at least to someone who's played through the previous Legacy of Kane games and has a reason of why I'm playing them and why I appreciate them. I could imagine for like a first time player, if someone's like new to the series, this is actually a pretty fun game. But for a Legacy of Ken experience, um, yeah, they definitely should have done something. They should have tightened up that, that experience a bit, I think. and atmosphere has really picked up, which is awesome. I appreciate that. A weapon. Oh god, they've got a, like a warrior class. they got like mages and warriors in here. Now look at these blade arms. I hope you know you're about to get immolated. Ooh. Cool. Oh. Aha. Fancy moves. Unblockable attack. What if I just dodged it? Oh, hang on. I could have blocked that. I spent, like, a good portion of the early game thinking both yellow and red were unblockable. So that was funny. Obviously, it was a learning experience. Now it's like clockwork to me, baby. Everything runs as it should. Give me your blood, I am thirsty. Their design's pretty cool. I like the design of these these things. Weapons to, are not lasting in this part of the game, that's for sure. And I mean, it doesn't really even matter at this point. You just block, you get immolate, you win. Obviously, there's a couple of different attacks that you should watch out for, like poison gas and that dude's red attack. But uh, outside of that, you just be burning, boys, and going about your day. You know what I'm gonna. You know what I'm gonna say is I thought that that was a glass floor. I thought it was a glass floor. It looks like there was a level of transparency that I could walk across it. And you know, there was also a part of me that said, you know what, that might not be glass. That might just be water. And um, yeah, can confirm. Uh, so that's what that was. So we will be jumping across that chasm now. You know, there's something about this game that gives me Jack and Daxter vibes. Like there's certain like sound effects mixed with the music and then 
I really felt it the most when we were speaking to that beast in the in the previous area. I, I forget the name of this creature. You know, the one who's apparently dying, and he's like, oh, "Go to the prison." That big guy. He reminds me of like, I don't know, the metal heads from Jack Two, or something like that. There's something in the voice that's very Jack and Dexter in a good way. Just gives me that that vibe. And especially in like a, an area that's like a location like this, feels like you're going through some ancient precursor uh, ruins or, or something like that, which is very cool. Now, we click. Ah, oh, I see. Haha. -ha. There's a telekinesis. I go over here. I drain the water. I flick a switch. I open a door. Uh, all bloody coming together in it go flush the water I don't know who I don't know why they have a I don't know why they have this is this a sewerage system they just I don't know <laughs> I don't get it who designed this place they said ah yes and we shall have uh, a water section of the hallway it's a water feature that's very annoying to get around Ah, see, it went to attack me. Did you see that? Ha ha ha! Oh, fuck. Alright, well, we did alright. Still got attacked. Oh, they've got people in the canisters! Oh, shit. And they've got a weird grabby arm. Damn. What is it? Ah. So if I, I could, like, uh... Whoa! Whoa, come get me. Okay. Hmm. Telekinesis. Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay. Um, so we can. I've got a grabby. Oh, I can go down, I guess. Hello. How you doing? I'll deal with this guy first. Oh, that's a move. Is that all you've got? I, I pressed dodge to the left and I just stood there and took the blow. That's crazy. Maybe it's because I've put ourselves in a corner. Hold on. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop that, will ya? Stop this madness. You know, this game, oh. I was still holding down block. What the fuck? All right, you know what? This game, when I get animation locked, you know, I can't immediately go to block. I get punished. But when a, a character, when an enemy is in the middle of attacking, their own attack, uh, their own attack, they can just stop, cancel their attack and immediately start blocking. How crazy is that? So balanced, so fair. it's more hassle than it's worth trying to defeat them normally. You're like, fucking hell. I'm trying to save my immolate for another enemy or something and it's... I'm genuinely trying to even avoid using it. Or like, I'll try and kill another enemy the, the other way. And it's like, there's no point. <laughs> it's honestly just not even worth it. This is so funny to me. Okay, so... Now... So... Now I can use the... Um... The grabby hand to just grab this enemy that just stands there and doesn't do anything. Like, uh, it's... Like, so much effort just to do this. <laughs> like... What the fuck? And he just stood there and, like, let it happen. 
They're like, ah, we need to prevent your character from just walking through this room easily. We need a challenge. Ah, that's right. Go and move the arm thing. What purpose does the arm thing serve? Um, I guess it grabs things. What exactly? Who knows? Don't think too hard. It's a grabby hand, okay? Just enjoy it. Ooh, hang on. I'll go for the... I'll go for this one. He's the harder enemy. Wygon Jind. You're out of here. Okay. Another person didn't even notice. Like, ah, yes, the conveyor belt is conveyor belting. All of those pickled humans in jars are doing so good. Being sucked up into a weird organic looking tube. What a gruesome place we're in right now. And then we put the we put the jars in for a little bit of a spin cycle. Spin them around real good. Drain out those extra juices. You know how it is. Sure thing, boss. Love learning how this pickled human jar factory works. I can see the grabby hand here is doing its job. I have become man. Instantly counter-attacking. Every time it just it just sounds like an old man is attacking me. It's like, oh, oh my frail bone arm swords. Oh. You are beaten. I killed an enemy. A legitimate way without resorting to immolate. Can you believe it in this day and age? Wild. Alright. Got more of the spiky arms. Just jump through them. Oh, no. The, the, the man screaming distracted me. My, the dog was barking. Please, sir, you have to believe me. I like how he kicks off of nothing when he does that attack. That's really good. Imagine having that level of power to kick off of nothing. All right, we are about to perform telekinesis on something. Telekinesis on this here device. What does it do? I don't know. That's the fun part. Everything I interact with in this game, like, what does it do? So those are the human's guts, and then the pickled humans are in the green jars. Oh, hang on. Okay, and then... Hello there, sir. Prepare to be charmed. And 
then I have to do this again to have this go over the other side. How painful is this? For some reason when you charm someone you can't jump with them. That would be too far. How dare you control someone and make them jump. I thought I was like literally stuck on the environment there. What a like amazing door switch to have it held in an entirely inaccessible part of the facility. You're like, man, I sure hope there's someone working down there so I can tap on the glass and be like, you there, open. Open the door, quick! You know, anyone who doesn't have the ability to charm people <laughs> through their powers is like, well, I guess I'll just wait for someone to end up on this weird platform. Uh, architecturally, this is a, a bloody genius facility. They've just really put some thought into this. I think it's it's just one of those things where the environments are so video gamey and they're not, they don't really feel like they, they have no logical place. I know we're in fantasy land, but there's a lot of fantasy things that still have a lot of elements to their game worlds and environments and stuff where it works. You know, it has function and it makes sense. <laughs> Always, it pulls you out of the game whenever you're like, I am play, I'm exploring a video game environment. And this would never work outside of this scenario, you know? Just funny. Just funny it is. Can I defeat this creature without using Immolate? Yes, thank you. And then this guy goes, oh well, I guess I better leave. For some reason I could only hold the gate up when there was my dog alive, and then as soon as my dog dies, my barrier is gone. Better be careful, boy, I've got a full Immolation meter. Haha, Wee! This is why I saved it. I hear human prisoners. They're gonna ask for my help. Oh, oh, please. Help me, kind sir. Oh, it's a good thing that this wasn't a death thing to fall down onto because, like, I did not look down. I could have fallen into lava for all I know. Ghost Hilden, that is what you have now become. Okay, so you guys are just chilling in there, huh? I'm sorry guys, you're in an unreachable location. There's nothing I can do for you now. And for some reason there's also this guy in there, but I don't know why. But I do not know why. Guess which one's gonna get released? Okay. So there's a switch up there. Oh, quit your whining, you fellas. Okay, we can't actually jump up. So, I've tried to jump up to higher levels before and it hasn't let me, but I guess in certain instances like this where the jump is not too egregious. It'll let you. So that's nice of them. Okay. Then we will now jump across here. And I'll jump across to this one as well. Open up this here chest. Look 
at this, look at this living, breathing facility I'm in right now. The mass, I assume. It's actually massive. Unplug it. Oh god. Yep. I unplugged one of the masses arteries. Okay. Oh yeah. So now that I kill this beast, the force field above will go down. So I yeah. These creatures are intrinsically linked to the force fields. Is a new mechanic. Did that open this one? Didn't open this one. Sorry, guys. Bad luck. What did it? No. Sorry, fellas. It's just not your day. I can go in here, though. Oh. Well, hold on. Did defeating that beast bring down that barrier up there? No. My assumption was wrong. like this organic structure with technology it works really well it's really cool there you go that force field was just tied to a switch yeah, there's quite a few games that manage to do that sort of blend the biomechanical stuff help will come to you, kind sirs. Oh, okay. One is in a chamber. For some reason. Oh, they've got some of them in, like, stasis pods now. For some reason. I do not know why. power up my sword that will survive all of five seconds. Um, okay. What should we be doing in here then? Bit of a creepy room. Alright. So congratulations, guys. Some of you have been promoted to pod life. You will be in the pod for an eternity. And you will like it. Some of you others, you can just walk around. That should be censored. It's a little too, a uh, little too exposing there. I checked that this was glass this time. Well, look at the mass there. There, it's like a big old heart. It's pumping. Named it literally. Oh, hang on. Let me up. Please, I'm begging you. Let me 
you go over there. You gotta make me jump for it. Oh, no. Is that behind glass? I don't think so. But the jump... Oh. The jump cuts off unless I'm on top of a box. Gotcha. Make it make sense. So there's the ancient vampire chests that have all been, like, dotted around ancient, like, Hilden stuff as well. Because that's the lore. These chests are ancient vampire stuff. They can be found anywhere. This blade is going to break and I'm not even going to land a blow with it. My favorite thing about this attack is that it's finally an attack that can actually stop their attacks, you know? I feel like they have plenty of those. <laughs> and now it's finally my turn. Feels very good. I really like the the level design that, that they've been pulling out lately. Really good stuff. Meridian's so boring to look at, and this is all great. I have been sealed in. Kane doing his little <sighs> is so funny to me. Every time. Oh my god, no. He's going to fill the room up with water. How did he know my weakness? Okay, what do we... What do we do here? Fuck you. Oh, there it is. Answer. <laughs> oh, if only there isn't some unassuming dude. Who can, like, just do this. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh my god. Hopefully there isn't some unassuming random human guy walking around. That would really fuck with your plans. I told you, my sword's busted. I feel like if you should if you power up your weapon, it should allow you to withstand it getting attacked, right? This dude's literally just like, off I go into the poison water. Stay there, creature. Going in. Into the mess. Here we go. Built a whole facility inside this massive beating heart. Here was the Saraphan Lord's ultimate weapon, his trump card, to be played against human and vampire alike. But I had my own weapon. I could feel the Builder's blood course coldly through my veins. If I could use it to poison this creature, the Saraphan Lord's plans would be ruined. Alright. Time to poison this bloody thing. It's leaking blood everywhere. So it's not so much of a heart, but like a big mushroom. The mushroom of something. Ancient Nosgoth mushroom. 
I thought that we were in some sort of beating mass of like a heart or something and the facility was like built into that. Uh, but it's the other way around. The facility is just built around this mushroom. And it feeds off the pickled humans. They drop it in there to feed it. Okay. Demands life, and so we give it pickled humans in jars. Oh, my bars are going to get big. Ah! Nice. It always annoys me that they're not, like, the same size. You know? I assume that's how people feel when, like, one titty is smaller than the other. Oh, yeah. Bring down the elevator. What's down here, though? Whoa, it's nothing. Oh, no! No! Come back! Get down here. Get back. Get down! Will you? I was exploring. Okay, I'm ready. Alright, I wonder what we're going to do to this thing. I'm going to launch myself into it. Not my precious axe. Don't destroy my precious axe, mate. No, my precious axe, mate. That's what I said not to destroy. How could you? At this point in the game, they're like, damn, we need to give a reward to anyone who's still playing the game at this point. Give them the most overpowered spell ever. Why didn't... Oh, you know. We're in a new... I can't say why didn't this happen in Soul Reaver, because it's a new timeline. I understand. I'm really excited to play Defiance, I'll tell you that much. We get to be back with Amy Hennig. She will cradle me in her Legacy of Cain arms. And I'm so excited. I can pick up one of these. Pick them up and choke them. Oh, this is actually probably a good way to test if... Uh, oh, never mind. It's going to die anyway. I was going to say, probably a good way to test if Immolate can do multiple targets if they're close enough. But this dude's about to just bleed out anyway. So it doesn't matter. I think it's just going to be the one target. It would make sense. I don't know if I will be able to increase my health bar another time. Maybe. We'll see. Keep drinking blood. Imagine if you were not a good vampire and you just spent most of this game not drinking blood. So I'd pick, a, pick him up and see how he felt. Ah! 
that is so funny that you they it straight up they just stop at their attack as soon as you attack them. I do love that we are invincible when we do activate this uh, ability as well. Very kind of them. I could only imagine how painful it would be trying to activate this ability building up your rage meter only for the game to just go, oops, sorry. Your rage meter is empty and your attack is cancelled. Oh wow, another elevator. Can you believe it? Could you, what if, right, hear me out. What if they just did one elevator that went to multiple levels? Just one. And instead they're like, no. You will get a bunch of different elevators. Because... <laughs> Fuck you, in it. All right, and now we will travel to this. Whoa, that's a bridge. Okay. You must travel the wavy bridge of Nosgoth, and then you must jump into the tube. Are we going in? We're entering the feeding tube of the mass. Lovely. Oh no, we're just dripping some blood in there. Hell yeah! Imagine if we had to go in. No thank you. That is fast acting! Success! Alright, quick, teleport me out of here. I'm ready to go. <laughs> teleport me out! It's gonna blow! The elevator's leaving without me! Okay. Oh no, hang on. The elevator came to my level for some reason. That's nice. I got a free evacuation. Yeah, screw you, you giant mushroom. We did it. Now let's see if we were being played for a pawn. Whoa! No way. Look at this transformation. Oh my god. You do not know me for the poor oppressed beast that crouched here before. I knew this was going to happen. I am restored. But wow. What are you? Not what, Cain, but who? My visage is unknown to you, but my name is not. Have you heard the story of the oldest vampire? Janos. <laughs> the legendary vampire of ancient days. How was this transformation possible? But Janos is dead. His heart torn from his body. Not dead, but imprisoned in this place. My blood was needed to power the device and feed the mass within. Starved of blood and sapped of life, I devolved into that horrible creature. The moment you poisoned the mass, I felt my strength return. That which is divine cannot be wholly suppressed. Divine. Your imprisonment has damaged your mind, Janos. The curse of vampirism is no mark of divinity. No, oh, you must delve further back into history, Cain, to know the truth of our heritage. Long ago, and long before I first walked the earth, vampires were godlike, and our kind ruled the land. But we were opposed by another race, similar to ours in power, but different in method and intention. The wars between us flamed for a thousand years, but we prevailed at last, and we banished our enemies from the face of the earth by powerful magic, sealing them into another plane of existence. Mm, what the Hilden! to do with my task at hand? Patience came. The race that fought the vampires was the Hilden, the very Hilden that you have just encountered. 
They control the Seraphim. They are striving to wipe out the vampires, enslave the humans, and reclaim all Nosgoth as their own. They are the evil that plague us once again, authors of the demons and the device and all else that threatens the land. They have returned to enact a terrible revenge. I thought you said that they were banished. They were, Cain. But several centuries ago, one of the Hilden was able to return to our world. He then used his magic to draw other Hilden through, but had not yet the power to begin a full invasion. He required an army here, and humans to drain of energy. He learned of a legendary order whose purpose was to purge the world of vampires long ago. He revived this order, and the Seraphan were born again. The Seraphan Lord. It was he that broke through. But how? Ah, now we come to your part in this story. When you chose to destroy the Pillar of Balance, you caused a rift throughout the world sufficient to breach through the dimensions. Was it I, then, who had engendered this war? No. I had been set step by step upon the path that led to this outcome. Hadn't this all been a Hilden plot from the beginning? My mind reeled at the implications. It was in this way that the Seraphan Lord was able to enter the world by building a magical gate. This is the Hilden Gate. Close this gate, Cain, and all the Hilden within Nosgoth will perish. The gate sustains their existence. Precisely. It is their umbilical cord to the other world. When it is closed, they cannot dwell in our world. And so all the Hilden will die, and the Seraphan Lord, as one of them, dies as well. I see. Ah, close the gate and kill the Seraphan Lord, Cain. Close the gate and shut the Hilden from the world once again. And how is this to be done? Let us go to Sanctuary. Vorador must be informed of all that has occurred, and a plan can be drawn to finish this once and for all. Okay. It was worth it to get to this point. We feasting on lore now. This is good shit. I love it. This is very good. You should have sent me with him. You were wounded. There is no way to know where Cain has gone or what he is doing. Even you haven't been able to contact him. Sup? Just me with uh, Yana Soljan. How are you going? This? No, wait. Do I dare believe my senses? Janos? My sire. They killed you. Mm, no, far worse. But that is a story for another time. Oh, there will be no time for any of us. Vorador, we need your counsel. We were wondering where you were. I've been doing what I said I would do. Cain? The device? I have destroyed it. But we are now faced with a peril even greater than before. How is this? The ancient history I will convey to you in a better hour, should any of us be so fortunate as to reach such a time. For this moment, you must believe me when I tell you your enemy, our great enemy, the Seraphan Lord, is one of a people that come from another world. His plan, beyond all others, is to bring this enemy race back into this world, from which my kind in another age once banished them. He must be prevented, or all our kind will perish. Sire, what must we do? He has created a base in this world, the Hilden City, across the sea. There, he has opened a gate to bring his kind into our world. My plan was to teleport us to the Hilden City and launch a final assault on the Seraphan Lord. But now, I find there is some kind of shield of magic that prevents me. 
If we are to fight them, that shield must be destroyed. Vorador, where is the Hilden city? Have any of your spies brought you this knowledge? Uma, what do you know of this? There has been, in the past months, enormous activity at the wharves. Warships and freighters loading and unloading in great secrecy. Our people who have infiltrated the area and returned alive have told me that the ships all seem to take the same course out of the harbor, but we do not know their destination. It must be the Hilden city. Why else would there be such interest at this time? You must take a ship to the city at once. There, you must find and deactivate the shield, so whatever forces we can bring may come to your aid and close the gate for all time. Have someone show me to the wharves. I'll make my way aboard one of those ships that's about to sail. When I have deactivated the shield, I'll contact you. I'm going with him. But I will need you here. Sire, I know the wharves, and where one may fail alone, two may succeed. I have no need of a guard at my back. You will find me perfectly competent for this task, I assure you. It is a chance we cannot afford to take, not when all we have fought for is at stake. There is more at stake than you can imagine. Take help where it is offered, Cain. It is settled. I will prepare our forces for the final attack. Go well, my child. Go well, both of you. Take help where it is offered. Yet I've always found that help offered when not needed is usually no help at all. <laughs> Dude, that was great. I do love... Oh, don't, don't call a chapter betrayal. Don't! Call a chapter betrayal! Borodor has said we must seek out a war galley. Look at my feet! What are the defenses here? Hell yeah! The of all the Seraphan outposts. They control all trade and all travel to and from Meridian. The Seraphan are nothing compared to what I have faced and destroyed. Don't be so arrogant. Their finest warriors will be waiting within. The Glyph Knights are deadly. We shall see. Tell me one thing, Cain, before we go in. If you do kill the Seraphan Lord and recover the Soul Reaver, what then? You know the answer to that. Tell me. Then Meridian and all Norsgoth will become mine. And the Vampire Resistance? Well, you may do whatever you wish, of course. Of course. What? Do you take me for a fool? You... Yeah. Vorador has told me all your stories, Cain. He said that you would stop at nothing to achieve your great ambition, absolute power. And when you control Nosgoth, are we to believe that you would let us vampires live and do what we wish? We are the only ones who could stand in your way. No, you will have to hunt us down and kill us. And how is that different from the rule of the Seraphan Lord? I will not defend or explain my actions to you, Uma. No one, not even you, will stand in my way! I thank you, Cain, for giving us this chance to defeat the Hilden for all time. But you have done enough. I shall be the one to find and kill the Seraphan Lord, and Nosgoth shall belong to the vampires once again. You fool. You have not the smallest chance of surviving such a battle. Now, give me the Nexus Stone, or I shall pry it from your thieving fingers as you convulse in death. Now the beast shows his true nature, and so quickly, too. I wish it had been otherwise for us, Cain. Farewell. Damn, okay. Urgh. <laughs> um, okay, lot to talk about. Um, mistake number one, don't name your chapter Betrayal, especially if the chapter is not even about or culminating in the betrayal, it just happens right at the beginning. You just gave it away immediately. I was like, oh, cool. So we're getting betrayed. And then we get betrayed. It, it like, and then the rest of the chapter now uh, is going to happen. It's a very silly little title. Also, Uma just begs uh, to come with us and then immediately just leaves the Nexus Stone. Well, is she gonna, back, gonna go back to Vorador and be like, oh, 
so never mind. <laughs> um, yeah, annoying. Very annoying. Um, we have to, we've got a lot to unpack here. Janos Aldrin uh, is, that's so great. So for some reason, so when Raziel and his Seraphim groupies killed Janos, he didn't actually die. Uh, he reverted into a weird beastly form and was kept prisoner. Um, and his heart is kept below. And then... Um, Allow, putting the builder's blood into the mass allowed his form to be restored. Uh, very cool to see him. Very cool to get some nice lore there. It felt good. It is funny how he explained himself to Cain and then teleported us to explain himself again uh, to everybody else. Um, but really great stuff. And also, look at this glow up. Look how spiky we are. It's so extra. Like, and so... It, incredible. Oh, do we now... Anyone who attacks us will now bleed in six different places. Um, love this outfit change. <laughs> We're no longer wearing a hood. Uh, Kane's appearance has definitely grown on me uh, over time, that's that's for sure. It was an adjustment because he, he looks so different in the Soul Reaver games. Obviously, that's because it's so much further in the future. He looks so much better than Blood Omen 1, at least. But uh, very good stuff there. I'm intrigued to see where this is going to go, especially with like a potential confrontation with Uma to get the Nexus Stone back or anything like that. We'll, we'll see. Uh, but it's it's finally tying into some bigger elements, uh, even going back to the first Blood Omen game where Cain just choosing to destroy the pillars allowed uh, the Hilden to, to even happen here. So we've got... Cain going, Raziel, Janos must stay dead. And I'm wondering if that's because of him coming back, like, alive here. Like, Raziel can't go and, like, resurrect Janos early because then this can't happen or something. I don't know. Uh, and it's kind of interesting that every time we do something significant in this game, we do get that same screen shake and rumbling of, like the timelines, you know, usually in Soul Reaver, you'd, an event would happen around the Soul Reaver and you'd get that feeling. Obviously, it's not the same thing here. It's genuine, like, aftershocks and explosions taking place, but it gives you that same feeling of uh, the timeline shifting when you make a major decision, you know? Uh, but I'm looking forward to next episode. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this one, and I will see you next time.